everybody welcome or welcome back to my channel if you don't know me my name is Mia I'm a professional pastry chef and I love giving you tips and tricks on how you can pursue a similar career path <laughs> Okay, so today I thought it would be fun to delve into my most frequently asked question. I get asked about culinary school every single day, whether I think it was worth it or not, how do I get in, what is it like there, all sorts of questions on culinary school and I totally get it. I mean, it's not every day that you come across somebody who went through the exact same thing that you're looking into and it's a really scary thing to jump into when not a lot of people talk about it a lot so i felt like today i should just come on and talk to you guys about my experience with culinary school do i think it's worth it and um, i guess just give you some facts i did a lot of research for you guys <laughs> if you see i have like a whole page of notes so i did a lot of research to be able to give you a lot of information to help you make your decision on whether or not you want to pursue culinary school or if you want to just jump right into the field hit the ground running and see where it takes you so the very first thing that we're going to cover is what culinary schools are available in the u.s I know that I have a lot of international viewers, so just bear with me, you guys, because it's hard for me to, I guess, find schools in every single country. So since I live in the US and I know what school is like here, I decided to show you guys just schools in the US, but just know that there are schools outside of the US that are just as good. I mean, Le Cordon Bleu in France is phenomenal. Um, I know the Culinary Institute of America has a campus in Singapore, so you can definitely find a good school outside of the US, but I am just covering these ones for right now. So I found these, I think it's like bestschools.org or something like that. I'll put the actual like title of the <laughs> website on the screen, but this is where I found this information. It was dated as December 2020, but I have noticed some changes in this list since then. Just because of COVID, things are happening so fast, it's hard to keep track. I'm gonna show the top 10 schools on the screen and I'm just gonna read you some information about each one, um, starting with the top five. So the first school that we're gonna start off with, it's the number one school in the country and it is where I went, not to brag, but it was a really good school and I absolutely loved it there. I would go there a million times over if I could. It's the Culinary Institute of America. We're gonna call it the CIA just because that's just what it's called. They have a campus in Hyde Park, New York. That is their main campus. They also have a campus in San Antonio, Texas and a campus in St. Helena, California. It's like right above San Francisco, so North California. And then like I mentioned a minute ago, they also have a campus in Singapore. So at least at the New York campus, you can get an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. At the other campuses, you can only get an associate's degree. In Singapore, I think you can only get a certificate, but don't quote me on that because they don't really talk about the Singapore location as much as the US locations on campus. So I'm not really sure, but I personally only got my associate's degree. I have friends who got their bachelor's degree and you know they loved getting that as well. And for tuition, this is just tuition. This isn't counting meal plans housing, any extras or anything like that. Textbooks aren't included in this price. It is a $33,690 a semester. I definitely paid more than this, I know for a fact, just based off of lodging and food plans and then also buying my textbooks and stuff like that. I know for a fact that I paid more than this. So for each of the prices that I show you, keep in mind that it is going to cost more and that this is just a tuition cost, but tuition does include your uniform and your knife kit and then obviously your classes for every school. So like I said, it's $33,690 $90 for tuition but with the CIA you also kind of get the bragging rights I didn't really think about this because for me I just liked the CIA better than other schools but I have seen it a lot since graduating that people see that you went to the CIA and you do kind of get like the first pick so that's just keep that in mind it is pricey but I do think that the title of being a CIA grad definitely makes that worth it Number two and three on the list are the Institute of Culinary Education and the International Culinary Center. 
both of these were in New York City, but they actually just announced, I think like a week or two ago, that they're combining into one school and it's just going to be the ICE, so international, oh no, the ICE is the Institute of Culinary Education. It's so confusing, but they're only one school now. They have a location in New York City and they also have a location in Los Angeles, California. It is $39,900 for tuition and they offer a certificate program. So you don't actually get a college degree, but you do get a certificate saying you completed a culinary course. I think it's like a year and a half, not entirely sure but I do know that they're the CIA's like biggest competitor. So if you're not too keen on the CIA, you really like the city life, ICE would be a fantastic choice for you. Number four is the Escoffier School. I don't actually know how to pronounce his first name. I probably should. I think it's a goose day. A, a, it's not August, but <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's the school named after Escoffier, who is like the chef that made chefs who they are today like the amount of influence that that man had on this current field in current times is like crazy so this school is seventeen thousand dollars for a certificate program or twenty five thousand dollars for an associate's degree they do not offer bachelor's degree but i do know that this is also a fantastic school i've heard nothing but good things about them and then number five is l'academy de cuisine this is in Maryland, but I have a lot of confusion about the school, if I'm being honest. I kept finding articles from 2017 saying that they closed their doors for good, but they were on the list from just last month as the number five school in the country, and I was also seeing reviews on Glassdoor, which is like the website that you can review jobs and stuff, and they were from 2020. So I don't really know if they're closed or not. If anybody has gone there in recent years or even in the past and knows what is up and wants to leave it in the comments so the rest of us can figure out if this is like an actual school we can go to, that would be great. But it's $29,000 tuition for a certificate program. And like I said, they are in Maryland. And then I'll leave the rest of the top 10 on the screen. I'm not gonna delve as much into them, but we have Johnson and Wales. We have the Metropolitan Community College, Kendall College, New England Culinary Institute, which actually closed its doors. Uh, I believe they're closing in April for good because of COVID. So unfortunately they're not accepting new students. And then also Sullivan University. So if you wanted to look into any of these schools, these are the top 10 culinary schools in the United States. Highly recommend any of them, to be honest. They're all gonna be life-changing experiences. So I know one of the biggest factors on deciding whether or not you wanna to go to culinary school is kind of like comparing yourself to other people and thinking like, do I wanna be like this person or this person or whatever? And just kind of seeing like successful people who did go the same path as you. So I just wanted to touch on big names that you might recognize that did and did not go to culinary school. So you can kind of see that you could be successful whether you do or whether you do not go to culinary school. So for people who did go to culinary school, we have Anthony Bourdain. Everybody knows and loves Anthony Bourdain. If you don't know him, watch his show. He was a phenomenal guy, phenomenal chef. He went to the Culinary Institute of America and he was just so knowledgeable, such a good guy. We have Grant Ackett, also went to the Culinary Institute of America. He owns Alinea, Next, The Aviary, a bunch of restaurants and bars in Chicago and that area. I highly recommend his episode of Chef's Table on Netflix. In my opinion, it is the best episode that they've ever made. His mind is insane what this guy can do. So I highly recommend watching his episode of Chef's Table if you're interested. Uh, we have Kat Cora, who is an iron chef. She also went to the CIA. I had a chef who actually had her in her class. She loved to tell stories about her. So we had her. And then Alton Brown, who is just like the smartest guy. I feel like he knows everything about food science. He went to culinary school as well, and he is crazy knowledgeable. So for didn't go to culinary school, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Gordon Ramsay did not go to culinary school, and he is now the yeah, I mean, if you don't know Gordon Ramsay, I recommend watching some Gordon Ramsay compilations on YouTube because he's quite the guy he's quite the guy i've actually heard amazing things about him uh, when you go to culinary school or just get into the industry in general you start to realize that the world is really small and these people are not that far out of our reach so i do know people who have met gordon ramsay bobby flay giada all these people 
and apparently Gordon Ramsay is like a huge sweetheart in person so don't take his screaming as like what he's actually like because it's just a TV persona and he does take his craft very seriously. Um, and then we have Rachel Ray who is another big name. I used to love Rachel Ray growing up. She is just like, I don't know, I feel like a quintessential Food Network star. And then we have Thomas Keller who owns the top restaurant in the country. It is called the French Laundry. It is actually right by the CIA California campus. It's up north in Napa. And he also owns Per Se in New York and a few other restaurants. He is absolutely incredible. And then we also have Alice Waters, who is another huge name in the industry. You might not know her as a celebrity chef, but she is really high up there in people that you will get to know throughout your education. And all of those people didn't go to culinary school. So if any of those people are really inspiring to you just keep that in mind so i thought we would do the pros and the cons of culinary school kind of talk about what is good and what is bad because i don't really talk about the bad stuff that often there's honestly way more good than bad i'm not gonna lie to you and i'm not just saying this to like get people to go to culinary school because i get nothing out of it so so for the pros we have the fact that it'll fast track your career and i saw this a lot when i was applying to jobs i saw this a lot with my peers um it really just puts you just in the right position to get a job and to keep things going. If you're looking to work in Michelin star restaurants, fine dining, things like that, I think culinary school will really help you go onto that path and it won't hold you back or anything like that. Um, I know a lot of people who graduated culinary school and immediately got jobs working for Michelin starred restaurants or you know crazy chefs that like they just do amazing things huge name resorts it really puts you in the best position possible it also it gives you the opportunity to do an externship i don't know if every one of the schools on my list does externships but i know that the cia does and i'm pretty sure ice does as well so an externship is like a semester off campus where you go and you work for a semester and then you come back to school and you get like outside experience so i worked at the four seasons resort in kona hawaii don't think I would ever live in Hawaii if I didn't go to culinary school. I lived there for four months. It was the most incredible experience of my life. It was one of the top four seasons in the world. I saw top notch hospitality every single day, just people treated like kings and queens and it really just opened my eyes to the world of hospitality and it's what made me fall in love with plated desserts. So culinary school really opens up a lot of career opportunities that you might not have gotten if you didn't go. Culinary school is also a really good place to mess up. That sounds so funny to say out loud, but if you're an employee and maybe you're scared of your boss, I mean, I was scared of my chefs at school, but they know that we're gonna mess up and that's what we're there for is to mess up. So it's a really good place to learn and start from absolutely nothing. I think it's so funny. One of my most frequently asked questions on my Instagram and my YouTube is, do I need experience to go to culinary school? And the answer is a big fat no, you really do not. I don't even think they require it anymore at the CIA. They used to require a certain amount of hours of experience and they completely wiped that clean. So you need zero hours of experience to go to culinary school. I don't want anybody to think it like, oh, I'm not good enough to go to culinary school, I'll never be able to do it because that's not true. Everybody goes in there knowing absolutely nothing. I went to a vocational high school for culinary arts and hospitality management, which means I went to cul culinary school for four years before I went to culinary school and I still walked in acting like I knew absolutely nothing because I knew that they were going to teach me a whole world of stuff that I didn't know. And let me tell you, you really do not need experience and it's such the perfect place to go if you don't have experience because nobody's paying you you're paying them so you're there to learn and to make mistakes it's like the perfect place to go if you have absolutely no experience which kind of leads me into my next point is that everyone is there to learn and to teach so when you go into your first day of class it's not like starting a new job where you know maybe one of your colleagues has been there for 15 years and one of your colleagues has been there for 10 years and you're like oh my god i don't know anything i don't know anything about the menu or how this works i don't know how any of the equipment works you walk into the classroom on your first day and that's everybody else's first day as well so you can really lean on each other and make sure that you get through it together you're not going to feel like you're above anybody or below anybody because you're truly all starting on square one all your chefs are there to teach you from square one they don't expect you to know anything so it's really important to know that everybody is there to learn 
or to teach and nobody's above anybody nobody is you know has way more experience than anyone else the next one is that it's perfect to make connections at culinary school you go in on day one and everybody is equal that means that like I said, nobody is above anybody. So let's say that me and you start culinary school together. And on the very first day, on day one, we become friends and we're friends all throughout culinary school. And then 10 years later, you own a culinary empire. And guess what? I have your phone number. I can call you up and say, hey, I have a really good idea. Would you like to invest? Or hey, do you have any recommendations? Do you know anybody who's hiring? You're gonna make so many connections because you're gonna meet so many people. Even the chefs, not even just your fellow students, even the chefs that work there are so willing to help you make connections. And trust me, they have been out in the industry for so long that they know who to talk to and how to get to where you want to be. I got so much advice from my chefs. It's such an amazing place to make connections and really push yourself to travel farther in your career. At the CIA, and I'm sure other culinary schools do it as well, we would have huge career fairs where a bunch of restaurant groups and resorts and baking companies, pretty much anything you could think of, would come and they would set up a booth and they would have people there and everybody would go and you would talk a little bit with them. You'd make connections if you were graduating soon or going on externships soon or if they were local to campus. You could exchange business cards and information, line up jobs, get interviews, you know, talk to them a little bit more about what they're doing, figure out, is this the type of company I wanna work for? Is, or is this the type of company I wanna work for? And it's such an amazing place to make connections and figure out what your path is. And then the very last pro that I have is that it can really open your eyes to other niches. I know a lot of people who went into culinary school thinking that they were going to come out doing something and then they graduated and they had a completely different plan and I'm one of those people. When I started culinary school, I was thinking in my head, I'm gonna make wedding cakes every day and special event cakes. I'm gonna be doing just cakes and I'm gonna have my own cake shop and blah, 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 cakes, cakes, cakes. And it's literally all I thought about. By the time I graduated, I want nothing to do with cakes. I love making them. It's a hobby of mine. I don't see myself professionally making cakes pretty much ever unless it's like investing in an outside business or investing in my mom's business where she makes cakes. But I don't see myself ever applying to a place that only does cakes. Now I only want to do plated desserts and fine dining. That's where I found my passion, but I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't been exposed to it in culinary school. So culinary school is really great if you don't know your niche yet. And even if you do know your niche, you might find something new because you're gonna go through the entire program and they're gonna show you, I mean, just in baking, they showed us plated desserts and restaurant service. They showed us breads. They showed us chocolate sculptures and tempering. They showed us, uh, you know, special event cakes with gum paste flowers and stuff like that. They really opened our eyes. They showed us entremets and petit gâteaux and so much that you wouldn't learn just from working at one place. So now we have the cons and I only have three cons. I promise you this is all I could think of and I would be honest with you if I could think of more. But the first con that I have is that it's expensive. I know when I was reading off those prices in the beginning of the video, I caught a couple people off guard. I know that some of you were like, oh my God, I didn't realize it was that expensive. But trust me when I say almost everybody's on financial aid. If you are really passionate about going to culinary school and the cost is the only thing holding you back, I highly, highly recommend that you reach out to whatever school you're interested in and talk to their admissions and financial aid offices and see what kind of programs they offer to help take away some of that financial burden. I know a lot of places offer financial aid, scholarships or on-campus jobs that'll chip away at your tuition as time goes on. It's really important to touch base and make sure that you have all of your options. Like I said, pretty much everybody I knew was on financial aid or took out loans or something. Trust me, they'll help you. They're, they're there to help. So if that's the only thing holding you back, I highly recommend you call and ask. The next con that I have is that it's very, very time consuming. Like culinary school is gonna be the only thing you do all day. It's it's the only thing. I had a job off campus that I only could work at on Saturdays and Sundays and sometimes I did even had to take one of those days off because I ha would have a Saturday class. So if you have a full-time job, it might not be the best decision for you to also go to culinary school. Culinary school, for me, it started at 2 p.m. 
and ended at 8 p.m. There's also morning classes. You don't get to choose. It's just whatever they assign you. There are also morning classes that started at 9 a.m. and ended at 1.30, I believe. So you don't get to choose, unfortunately, whether you want morning or night, at least at the CIA. I think at the ICE, you get to choose. Um, but like I said, it's pretty much half the day for just your kitchen class. And then you can also have academic classes on the opposite end. So when I was uh, my freshman year, I would have uh, like English class, I would have it at eight in the morning. And then I would go to, let's say culinary math at like 11. And then I would go home or to back to my dorm for like two hours. And then I would have to go to my kitchen class that was two to 8.30 every single day. So it really took up my entire day. Like that was my whole day. And it kind of calmed down towards the end of my like school career I guess and once I was about to graduate but when you get closer to graduate they kind of switch up the schedule on you a lot so it went from you know being consistently always busy to less busy but your times of day switch all the time it's like I had one class that was at 5 a.m and then three weeks later I had a class that was at 2 p.m and then three weeks later I had a class that was at like four so it really switches up a lot and it's really time consuming uh the last con that I had is that it's not accessible to everyone everywhere like I said I listed just places in the U.S. and there are culinary schools outside of the U.S. that are just as phenomenal and will help you so much um it's really not as accessible as like a normal college where you can pretty much stay in your hometown and find a community college anywhere in the country or I don't really know what, uh, how other countries do it, but I'm sure that school is pretty accessible no matter where you are. Culinary school is pretty far and few between, so if you can't move, if you have a family or anything like that, it might be hard for you to find one that's local to you. So now I'm just going to talk a little bit about what kind of person fits best into the culinary school mold and what kind of person would be better as just working their way up through the career because I really do think it depends on the type of person you are. So if you're more detail oriented, if you really like the art of food as opposed to just making like hearty food, like comfort food almost, um, culinary school is probably on the path for you. I'm gonna show you a bunch of images on the screen. These are all from The Art of Plating on Instagram, which they take all of their pictures from other chefs. So if you wanna follow them on, on Instagram and you can find the original chefs who did all of these. But this is the type of stuff that culinary school will prep you for and set you up and put you on the right track for. This is the kind of stuff that Thomas Keller does. So it's also not really necessary to go to culinary school, but it definitely will put you years ahead on this track than just working your way up and I mean years ahead so if this is the kind of thing that interests you I would definitely give culinary school some serious thought because this will help you so much for me I'm a very fast-paced person you've probably noticed that I talk really fast I walk really fast I do everything fast but I do enjoy slower services more like I said I'm really big into plated desserts so I prefer fine dining over a casual restaurant because I can really focus on the details I'm a super visual and artistic person person and I'm a perfectionist so I like to really perfect every plate that I do but if I'm more into comfort food casual dining a place that you might just go with your friends on a Saturday night then culinary school might not be for you so I worked at a place it was local to my area it was a really popular restaurant they were always busy and I think there was like two or three of us that went to culinary school out of the entire kitchen staff of I think like 20. They were all so talented at what they do. They were putting out like 300 plates a night. So it was crazy busy there. So if you're more into that high energy, fast paced environment, then culinary school honestly isn't really necessary for you because culinary school will kind of set you up for the more detail oriented, really focusing on each and everything you do as opposed to just like feeding a crap ton of people. <laughs> so culinary school is also gonna be better for people who are willing to make it their life. For me, I had graduated high school a year before I started. I had just gotten too old for cheerleading because I used to be a competitive cheerleader. And it was pretty much the only thing that I had going on for me in my life at that exact moment. So I was willing to delve into it and make it my entire life. That's like all I did. But if you have a family, a full-time job, 
you know, other responsibilities that you can't make culinary school or your career the only thing you do in life, then I'm going to say you probably shouldn't go for it because the dropout rate of culinary schools, unfortunately, is really, really high because it's a, it's a high stress environment. I'm not going to lie to you. And that probably should have been under cons, but I just thought of it now, but it is a high stress environment. It's like I said, it's all you do every day, all day. You go to class for forever. You come home, you have homework. So if you can't make it your whole life, then unfortunately, I think it might be a little overwhelming. So I think I pretty much covered everything that I want to cover. If you have any questions or anything that I didn't touch base on, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I know I talk kind of fast and I move pretty quickly through everything but I definitely wanna make sure that I get everything covered. So if you have any more questions, make sure you leave them down below and I'll try to get to all of them and answer all of them. If you have anything you want me to film a video on, also leave that in the comments below. I take in every suggestion. Give this video a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and tune into any future videos and I will see you next time. Bye guys.